Hello and welcome to this section of the TI-89 Calculator Tutor. Uh, in this section we're going to sort of extend what we were doing in the last section. Uh, in this section we're going to be converting between rectangular coordinates, uh, cylindrical coordinates, and spherical coordinates. Uh, and so the, the deal to remember here is really it's just an extension of what we learned in the last section. So in two dimensions you have rectangular uh, coordinate uh, xy, right, xy plane, and we convert that to a distance from the origin r and an angle. That's the angle from the x-axis. So it's still two numbers to represent something in the two-dimensional plane, but it's just two different numbers. One of them is xy, the other one is r comma theta, right? Now when you go to three dimensions in rectangular system, you have x, y, and z, right? So you have x, y, and then z would be sort of coming out of the uh, out of the plane of the calculator, right, the vertical dimension, so to speak. So that would be able to let you to plot something in three-dimensional space. You can also represent that same point in 3D space in a cylindrical system, which is a uh, distance r comma theta, and then, a, and then a variable z, which would be uh, the vertical dimension. So it's r theta z. And in spherical notation, uh, you would have a distance from the origin rho, and then you would have an angle theta and an angle phi. Now believe me, this lesson, if I were teaching it uh, from the point of view of you, you having no idea what spherical system is, I'd be drawing a lot of pictures, I'd be showing you what rho is, I'd be showing you what theta and phi is, but when I'm doing these calculator tutors, I'm basically assuming that you're in a math class, you're learning about these different systems from your teacher or maybe from my DVDs that are teaching you what these different coordinate systems are. The purpose of this calculator is more geared towards teaching you how to do the, the operations on the calculator. So if you're not sure what a spherical system is, I guess is what I'm trying to say, if you're not sure what a cylindrical system is, then uh, that's really not addressed as far as teaching you everything about what the system is. It's not really supposed to be addressed in this lesson here. So, But we will teach you how to do the conversions. So let's go ahead and do that. It's, it's quite easy actually because if you open a bracket here, remember every coordinate that you type in has to be between these brackets. If you put a number like 1, 2, 3 and then close the brackets, see before we only had two numbers and so the, the calculator interpreted that as x, y. When you put a third number, then the calculator is going to interpret that as x, y, z. So it's going to interpret this in a rectangular sense. We didn't put any angles down here. We didn't put any angle symbols. So it's not going to interpret it as a spherical or a cylindrical system because those guys have the angles. When you just have three numbers with comma between the brackets, it's going to assume that you mean x, y, z. Now, notice that we are in radian mode. So much like last time, when we do the conversions to either of these new systems, uh, it's going to give your angles back in radians. So that's kind of what we need to make sure we realize. Now, to do the conversions, you go to the same place as last lesson. You go to the math menu, right? You go to the matrix menu, number four. You go up a few times to vector ops. And before, we were converting between polar and rectangular. Well, now we're going to be using these guys at the bottom, cylindrical and spherical. So if we select number six and hit enter, then we've typed in our coordinate, and it's converting to cylindrical system, and the angles are going to be in radians. So we hit enter, and it thinks about it. Of course, it's keeping everything exact because of the way it's doing the trigonometry to figure out what the angles are. If you get tired of looking at this all this inverse tangent business, hit the green button, squiggly equals, and it'll tell you that the point 1, 2, 3 is equal to a distance of 2.23607 uh, from, the, from the origin and in an angle of 1.107 radians in the xy plane from the x-axis and the z component is 3, right? So there's a closed bracket there. So this is r comma theta comma z. So it's this is sort of like the polar representation in the xy plane of what's going on and then the third dimension z is the same as the dimension that we typed in because that's the definition of a cylindrical system. You uh, basically convert X and Y to polar, that's what we do here, and then Z stays the same. That's the definition of a cylindrical system. So if that's a little bit foreign to you, then you need to go brush up on what a cylindrical system really is. And you can do that on, on my calculus DVDs or whatever other resource you have. But the angle that came back is in radians. Now if we go into the mode menu and briefly fly this guy out to degrees and hit enter a couple times, our last calculation input is still listed here. So if we hit enter again, 
It'll again come up with an exact answer. Go ahead and hit squiggly equals, and it'll be in degrees. So see, we're in degrees now. So again, it's 2.2, same as before. Uh, the Z value does not change. The only thing that changes really is the angle. So these two numbers, they look quite different, but they're exactly representing the same point. This is 63.4349 degrees. This is 1.10715 radians. That represents exactly the same angle. All right, so let's go ahead and clear that. That is converting to cylindrical system. Now, let's go and type a different value. Let's say we have negative 2, comma, 1, comma, negative you know, 4. So we'll close our brackets off. Here we've inputted x, comma, y, comma, z. Now let's go and convert that. Let's go to math menu, number 4 for matrix. Go up to vector ops, convert to, instead of cylindrical, we'll convert to a spherical system. So don't forget the fours for the trees. These are just different ways to represent the exact same point. It's, it's always going to be three numbers. It's just different coordinate systems uh, to represent different ways of, of representing that, that this point that we've got here. So we'll hit enter and we'll see a bunch of gobbledygook. The reason we see the gobbledygook is because when you convert this stuff by hand you're using a bunch of trigonometry uh, to basically do the inverse tangent of, of these guys to get the angles, uh, which is really how you do it by hand. To get the exact hit squiggly equals and it'll tell you that negative 2 comma 1 comma negative 4 is equal to rho which is 4.58258 uh, theta which is 153.435 and phi which is 150.7 and it scrolls off the screen so we can go up and highlight and we can go and see the rest of the digits there right so here again you have three numbers rho theta phi and that's the definition of, of the uh, spherical system. This angle theta is basically the angle in the xy plane, uh, basically to sort of like where your point lies in that plane. And this is the angle from the z-axis to where it, uh, it lies. So without a picture to draw, I can't really make it any more clear than that. But certainly in the calculus DVDs, uh, in, in your textbook, or, or in my DVDs, we'll lay out exactly how this system is set up. But strictly speaking, this is how you do the conversion. Stick the coordinate guy in there convert to spherical, the angles that come back would be in degrees. If we go switch it off to radians, then these, these angles would come back with different numbers, but it would be, be representing the same point. So we have learned how to convert from rectangular to uh, basically to spherical and cylindrical. Now what happens if we go the other way? It's very easy. So we're in degree mode, open up a bracket, Let's say we're going to input something in rectangular, or, or I'm sorry, in, um, in cylindrical notation, right? So that's uh, r, comma, theta, comma, z, right? So let's say radius of 4, comma, theta. We have to put an angle symbol to tell it we're talking about an angle. So let's put 45 degrees, comma, z of 7. So with this, uh, and notice we're angle of 45, so it's going to assume that it's, this is in degrees. So this means... If you look at the xy plane, it's a distance of r units from the origin at an angle of 45 degrees in the xy plane, and then you go up along the z-axis of 7 units. This is representing the point. If we want to convert this guy, we go to the math menu. We go to, uh, actually we want to go to number 4, and then we go up to vector ops. We can do lots of things. We can convert that to a rectangular. So it will get x, y, z, right? So we get this guy. It gives us exact numbers because it's doing the, the math here required to do that. If you want to get rid of those radicals, hit squiggly equals. This uh, r theta z is going to be equal to 2.82, 2.82 comma 7. So x comma y comma z. That's what that's equal to. Uh, we can go off. Let me go and backspace over this guy. We'll convert the exact same angle. We'll go to this guy, vector ops and we'll convert it to, so we're already in cylindrical, so we, if we hit this, we're just gonna get the same answer back, but we can convert it to spherical, uh, which would give us a distance and two angles, right? That's what a spherical system is. So we'll go ahead and hit enter. It's gonna give us a bunch of exact answers. We can hit squiggly equals, and then what we get back is 8.06. That's the distance from the origin in three-dimensional space, comma theta, comma phi, right? So. Again, I can't really get into the details of why and how this conversion makes these points all the same, but uh, certainly when you study spherical systems, you'll understand that it basically take, always takes three numbers to represent something in three-dimensional space. Here we've got r, theta, and z. Here we've got rho, theta, and phi. And this calculator is able to convert between all of them. Now one thing I will say uh, 
is that much like before, you can override the current angle measurement. So right now we're in degrees. We know that any angle we type in is going to be interpreted in terms of degrees. But let's say, just like in the last section, that we wanted to temporarily override this guy so that instead of degrees, it was going to treat it in terms of, of, uh, of, uh, of radians. And so we can easily do that. So let's type in a spherical uh, guy. So we'll say 7, comma, uh, and we want to put theta and phi in there. But let's say we don't want to change the, the, the mode of the calculator to radians. We just want to temporarily override it. So let's put an angle guy here. We'll open up some parentheses because I want to put, let's say, pi over 2. Right, so this is theta, and then let's go ahead and put a comma, and we want to put another angle for phi because we're going to input this spherical guy. So we'll put an angle symbol, and let's put you know pi over three. So we'll put pi over three, because typically when you're dealing with these uh, curved systems like this, and the angles are typically going to be in radians and multiples of pi. So this would be the calculator is going to interpret this as rho, theta, and phi, basically. If you've got only one angle here, it's going to interpret it as cylindrical. If you've got two angles, it's going to interpret it as spherical. So it's smart enough to know what you're entering in. That's why you need to type this angle symbol. Now, if we did it just like this, it says pi over 2 and pi over 3. These are just numbers, right? But the calculator is going to assume that we've typed in degrees. But we're not really intending for this to be degrees. We're really sort of intending to do a little temporary calculation in terms of radians. So we have to tell the calculator that this really is pi over 2 radians, right? So uh, what we do is we go into the math menu, and we go to angle, and we have to put the little r there. And that tells the calculator, okay, this is actually pi over 2 radians. So we'll go and do the same thing here, math menu, and we'll go into angle, and we'll go into radians. So now this is saying calculator, here's a distance of 7 from the origin for rho, pi over 2 for theta, pi over 3 for 5. These are both in radians, even though you're actually in degree mode. Now let's go ahead and convert that. We'll go to the math menu, we'll go to vector operations, and that was a spherical system. Let's go ahead and convert that to uh, rectangular. So we'll convert it to rectangular. Let's go ahead and hit enter. We're going to get an exact answer. We can convert this guy out. And we'll see right here that when we do all this stuff, you get negative 2 times 10 to the minus 13. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, anytime you see a super small number like that, 10 to the minus 13, it, the calculator is doing a calculation and sort of rounding it. This is basically 0 when you get such a small number like that. Uh, but what we have really is 0, 6.06, 3.5. Uh, uh, so this is x, comma y, comma z, right? So that's what this is telling me here. Now, we can go and do the same calculation. That returned us to rectangular system. Let's go and convert that number, or this guy, number four. We'll go back up to vector. Let's go and convert that guy to cylindrical, uh, like this. So we'll convert this guy, you know, rho, theta, and phi. We'll convert it to a cylindrical system. We'll hit enter. And when we do that, we'll go and do squiggly equals. Notice what we got back. Here we're going to cylindrical system. So r, comma, theta, comma, z. Notice theta came back in degrees, right? This theta came back in degrees because we're in degree mode. So when we input the, the thing, we told it, look, treat these guys as radians. But when it does the calculation and it spits the answer back out to you, it's going to return the answer in degrees. If you want it to return the answer in radians, then you need to go back to the mode menu and basically select radians. So we'll do that. We'll hit like this guy. We'll do the same calculation again. We'll convert it over so you can see what happened here. The previous calculation that we had, we got back an angle of 90 degrees. When we did the calculation again, we got back this pi over 2, which is 1.57. So that's the same angle in radians, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So the most important thing when you're doing these conversion of, of coordinate systems is to know what, um, know what mode you're in. If you're in degrees, everything you type in is going to be interpreted in terms of degrees, and the angles that come back in your conversions are going to be in degrees. Same thing for radians. If you type in radian mode, then what the angles you type in radian mode and, and the angles that come back in the answer are going to be in radians. You can temporarily override the inputs to be whatever you want, but still recognize that whatever comes out the other end is going to be the mode that you, that you, actually, um, uh, that you actually have there. So personally, if it's me, 
honestly, if I need to deal with degrees for a few minutes, I'm gonna go back to the mode menu and just convert it to degrees because then I won't get confused. But they do provide this ability for you to do the override here. And just like we learned in the last lesson, if you go back to the angle menu, I'm gonna go ahead and hit escape here. If you go back into the angle menu, then you can also override the calculator. If you're in radian mode, you can put a little degree symbol there and it'll, it'll override it and take it back to degrees for you there temporarily. Well, that is basically how you convert between coordinate systems, three-dimensional coordinate systems in the calculator. And I know it may seem a little bit confusing and you might have to hit the squiggly equals and, and do things that, to make sure you understand what the calculator is doing, but I guarantee you that it, it sure does beat doing all these calculations by hand and then not and then making a mistake later on. Usually when you need to do these conversions like this, you're doing it at the very beginning of a problem. So if you get it wrong, then the, the rest of the problem is totally wrong. So it's really nice to have a sanity check in your calculator built in so that you'll definitely not get this kind of thing wrong.